Hi friends, welcome to, I guess, episode three is what we're calling this of our little welcome to harvest uh, vlog. So Jake and I got to sit down last night and kind of talk about this. It's been really cool to watch all the comments and everything roll in and uh, hear your feedback. And we got to talking about what we want the purpose of this to be or the goal of this little video series. And we both kind of came to the conclusion that as much as we love the farm, as much as we love harvest, as much as we love this way of life, it doesn't mean anything without God. So we have found that our deep and raw and vulnerable conversations have started coming from the combine seat a lot or the tractor seat wherever we may be and we kind of figured this out last summer all the time that we got to spend together as a family crammed in a combine that these conversations were being cultivated that we had never had as a family before that we had never had as a couple before that we were just kind of forced to sit and be with each other and we were able to slow down enough that we could have these conversations so our goal with this is to, yes, bring you along on harvest and show you what we do on harvest and show you kind of the craziness and the chaos that comes with it. But it doesn't mean anything again without Jesus. So we want to bring you in on those, on those tractor seat conversations that where we get vulnerable and we talk about the hard stuff of marriage and the messiness of faith and parenting and really just the real rawness of life. So that's where we're combining these videos that we're going to bring you on harvest, but we want it to be more than just look where we're cutting wheat today. Like we want it to go deeper than that. If we're going to put the time and effort into it, then we want it to go, we want it to go deeper and be more meaningful and be valuable to you guys so that's where our hearts are at and again I can't say it enough that how much we appreciate you guys watching and following along and it just makes us so happy here out in Scott City nice flat land the guys enjoy cutting on flat ground just started on our first field out here in Scott City. Uh, it looks like really good wheat, but things are a little hectic this morning. Everyone's running around and we have some new headers on our combines that the guys are trying to get figured out. So we are in here in the grain cart. We're going to run the grain cart for a while to uh, try to help out the guys and give them a little break while they figure everything out. So these are the new headers that everyone's trying to get figured out. They're called shellborns. We've never ran them before. They pull the head off of the wheat instead of uh, cutting it off of the stock. And you can see Jake out there in the background. He is out looking to make sure they're doing a good job and that they have them set right and everything. I guess we'll pick this guy up and give him a ride. Good afternoon it is here it's 4th of July so happy Independence Day everyone I hope that you are all celebrating with family and friends we are pushing it hard here the moisture is right on the line of being too wet for us to cut but um, right now we're still going which is good so if it uh, keeps drying out it'll be a It'll be a late night for us here if it uh, stays dry for us. So tensions are running really high right now, which is, is just really normal for harvest. Um, I have learned not to take it personally when things just get heated and Jake does not get mean, don't get me wrong. But I hear from a lot of farm wives a lot that are trying to deal with the high tensions of whatever season it may be. It doesn't have to just be harvest. 
And then there's always those jokes that go around, like, if your marriage can survive harvest, it can survive anything. Or if you can work cattle with your spouse and still be married, then you can survive anything. And we all laugh at those, but I think we also know they're fairly true, just that tensions do run high and sometimes we say things we don't mean. Sometimes we just get a little snippy because everyone's stress level is just so high. But I think this applies to all marriages, not just farming ones, that when those times come, when tensions do get a little high, whether it's Jake getting a little snippy or me getting a little snippy or whatever the case may be, or whether it's both of us, we always say we're sorry. It doesn't matter if he personally said something to me or I said something to him, or maybe we were just talking about the moisture of the wheat, but our tone was just not the nicest maybe because of how stressed out um, everyone's been. We always make sure we come back together and say, that wasn't personal, I'm sorry. And I just think that's a really big thing to remember because a lot of times, especially for me, it's not first nature to say that I'm sorry. It just doesn't really come that natural. And I have to force myself to apologize to my husband because I know that it's not personal, but he might not know that. So that's our little tip for today, that uh, go back and say you're sorry. Uh, even if you feel justified and even if it wasn't personal, it'll help. Uh, we get a lot of messages about marriage over here on the page and learning forgiveness and learning to say I'm sorry has been huge. So anyways, that's my 4th of July takeaway, I guess. Uh, from what's just going on out here in the field. So I hope you guys have a great day.